Thank you very much, Tim. Good afternoon, Australia. Hello from Canada. I am uh, happy to get this opportunity. Oh, oh, my slides have been going on by themselves. Uh, get this opportunity to talk to you about um, something pretty close to my heart here. We have been working for the last six years on the development of Europe's largest manganese resource, which is hosted in tailings, which is waste from a decommissioned mine in the Czech Republic. This is a globally significant resource. resource. Uh, we uh, have designed around it a 25 year project to produce approximately 50,000 tons per year of high purity manganese uh, in the form of battery grade products. Uh, this is very much a recycling project, no hard rock mining, no significant new waste generation. It makes it unique in the world. Uh, this has of course um, helped us a great deal because we don't have to have a big open pit and a big pile of waste beside it. Um, regulators, local communities have been a lot more interested in this project. And in fact, I, I, I'd like to think supportive of this project as we've advanced uh, through a series of um, environmental and other regulatory reviews. We're quite advanced right now, um, and uh, the lack of uh, opposition to the project has been extremely helpful. There are also significant environmental benefits around the project in that we will be remediating what is an already polluted brownfield site. We will be leaving it in better condition than it is today. Uh, furthermore, in, as we are located in the center of Europe, we're uniquely position to serve a very rapidly growing EV and lithium ion battery market. Um, plus, uh, being in Europe in a re relatively densely populated area, we're blessed with extraordinary infrastructure. We have rail, major rail, right on site, highway, gas pipeline, water and power available. Um, I don't believe there's a project anywhere like this anywhere in the world. Next slide, please. We're focused on producing two principal manganese battery grade products. The first one is a manganese sulfate product um, of an extraordinary purity, um, which we believe is very important uh, to confer uh, great performance uh, characteristics to the batteries that use it. And the other one is uh, an electrolytic manganese metal product, again, of an exceptional purity. Uh, we expect that uh, the sulfate to metal ratio coming out of the plant will be around two thirds to one third. Um, and I should point out that, you know, the manganese industry is large. There's over 20 million tons a year of manganese produced, um, going largely to the steel industry. But um, the battery grade manganese, the highly refined manganese business is the fastest growing business driven principally by the EV industry. And we are very much intent on becoming a significant player on this. Next slide, please. High pure manganese is important to the industry. I just got some updated figures this morning that show that about 52% of the batteries produced in the last year um, are NMC uh, batteries. And then there are even other batteries in, in, in the rest of the uh, pie that uh, also contain manganese. But uh, manganese is important. It's the lowest cost battery metal in this NMC cathode chemistry. Um, and there's not a lot of incentive to get rid of it, uh, unlike cobalt and nickel, which are expensive. Uh, manganese, in fact, is seen as an opportunity to lower the cost of batteries. It has a great electrochemical um, features to it. And um, we now are seeing very clearly in um, the emergence of uh, new manganese rich cathode formulations driven by a number of the largest players who are trying to bring down the cost of these batteries so they can sell more cars. Next slide, please. We have seen a very strong um, trend um, emerge since we started this project, a very strong focus on 
environmental and social impact of raw materials production. And uh, our project with its unique waste recycling aspect and uh, its very European, um, you know, localized um, nature um, has attracted quite a bit of attention there. Um, we see it as a great opportunity for Europe to supply itself, at least a, a measure of self-sufficiency um, with sustainably produced products. And we're very much focused on that. And I'll tell you more about it in a minute. Um, next slide, please. One of the clear things that um, we see is that the majority of the manganese products made uh, in the world that are used for batteries um, are made in China. Uh, China was an early mover and was able to develop um, a very good industry and continues to be the principal point of supply response for these products. Uh, but we, are, we have an opportunity right now um, ourselves um, in being able to, to, to skew that balance in, in a small way, notwithstanding the fact that uh, the anticipated demand growth for manganese for batteries is, is enormous, as you can see from the graph here on the, on the right. And uh, there is a deficit emerging already, um, but it'll be cured. So, you know, the price will cure it. Um, and there are a number of, of projects uh, among which ours. And um, that graph, by the way, uh, includes our production on the supply side. So there's a great deal of new manganese supply needed. Next, please. This is a slide I always like to show. Uh, it gives you a, a very graphic sense of our strategic positioning in the middle of Europe and what is becoming a true global hub for EV and battery production. Um, virtually every manufacturer in Europe needs manganese. Um, virtually every automaker in Europe has committed itself to battery chemistries containing manganese. And um, we've got a shot at becoming the only primary producer of these products. Next, please. The process we intend to use uh, entails the use of only proven conventional and commercial technologies. We're not reinventing anything here. We're not um, going in, you know, taking risks with uh, technologies. Um, the, the chemistry is well understood. What we are doing is doing it in a cleaner way. Um, we expect to be able to meet every um, European um, and Czech uh, environmental standard by simply taking these soft unconsolidated tailings, running them through a, me a wet magnetic separation process, um, a leaching and purification process, electrolysis, where we can end up with a metal product that can be sold into the market directly in flake or powder form, or and convert it into a sulfate product that uh, we can um, sell um, and which is in, in, in high demand. Next, please. This is an advanced project. Like I said to you, for six years, we have been working to um, bring this project on stream. We have completely drilled off our resource. We have over 98% uh, now of the resource classified as measured under JORC or NI43101. We've done an enormous amount of work on metallurgy, bench scale tests. Uh, we built a pilot plant and we are now constructing as we speak uh, a seven times scale up of that pilot plant, which we call our demonstration plant, which is intended to produce large scale samples, multi-ton samples of finished product uh, for supply chain qualification. And we've already signed five agreements with five groups and are in very active discussions with others. Uh, we expect the startup of that demonstration plant in Q1 of 2022. Next, please. We've uh, done a great deal on the permitting front. Like I mentioned to you, um, we've done a lot of work on uh, community engagement uh, and um, have developed very strong, supportive, collaborative relationships even. Uh, but uh, also with the regulatory uh, authorities. Um, last year, we filed um, a preliminary EIA for the project. Um, 
because we made a voluntary decision to go through a two-stage EIA so we can get enough feedback to finalize a strong final EIA or ESIA in our case. And um, that went extremely well. Um, there was very little controversy around the project, if any, actually. And uh, got a lot of great input, which is now being incorporated, uh, not only into the final EIA, but actually into the plant design, little tweaks, small things um, that uh, improved the project. And uh, we're expecting to file that uh, in Q1 of 2022, if all goes well, um, perhaps in, in as few as six months after that, we could have this approved uh, and green lighted. Um, next, please. In the design of this project, we've incorporated a great deal of very progressive environmental practices. A lot of it is really a result of the unique nature of this deposit, this unconsolidated old waste that's just sitting here. So there's no need for crushing, grinding, or hard rock mining for that matter. Um, and um, we've really strived to make sure that this project is well integrated into the local community. Um, a lot of focus on the long-term reclamation of the project, bringing it back to long-term productive community use. Um, we've been evaluating quite successfully, I must say, um, the opportunity uh, to acquire renewable and CO2 free power, which would further reduce an already small environmental footprint for this production. Um, we have been doing testing recently on the capture reuse of CO2 and hydrogen that comes out of the process itself um, so that we can essentially make our own reagents um, and prevent having to buy other externally produced reagents. Um, importantly, th the plant will be generating zero effluent. Um, we expect to recycle all our water. Our only losses are through evaporation and the moisture that reports to tailings. Um, and uh, that's just a, a, a you know, very, very helpful um, with the design of the project and the acceptance of it. We also expect to use zero fresh water. We have opportunities to use um, contaminated or industrial wastewater. And um, all the work we've done so far indicates that that uh, is ideal. Um, so no fresh water use, no water taken out of the aquatic environment. Um, next, please. Uh, in 2019, we published a PEA, a Preliminary Economic Assessment under Canadian um, uh, regulations. Um, we estimated a capex of 404 million US dollars and after tax net present value of 593 over a 25 year life project with a after tax 22.6% IRR. Um, we have seen great strength in the market uh, for these products and expect um, that we will uh, be able to continue with strong economics as we now move into our feasibility study, which is scheduled for completion again in Q1 2022. Next, please. Tim, I lost track of time. So if you want to signal how many minutes I got left with your fingers. One. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, I better hurry up. Um, look, th there are many strategic advantages to this project. We're, we're in, this company's in good shape, moving quickly right now. Um, we've got this chance of becoming this only primary producer. There's uh, of high purity manganese products in Europe. Uh, great deal of uh, interest from customers, and we expect to um, be able to develop some very supportive relationships there, which will help with project finance. Um, we believe that this project is unique in the world in an ideal way to invest and participate in the growth of a high purity manganese market. Next, please. Um, very quickly touch on our schedule. Look, we're targeting production uh, in late 2024, early 2025, uh, after an 18 to 24 month construction period. A lot of the heavy lifting in setting the stage for that will be done this year and in 2022 with the completion of the ESIA feasibility study, um, supply chain qualification, 
and as we hope, um, the binding offtake agreements that will facilitate permitting and perhaps even uh, support from government or European Union bodies that would very much like to see the localization of supply chains. Next, please. Final slide. Um, our company is listed in on the ASX, of course, as well as the TSX Venture and the OTCQX. They have about a $220 million market cap and uh, very well funded, um, enough to get us through all that work that we put in front of you for 21 and 2022. And next slide. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, sorry, I went perhaps a little over my time. Thanks, Marco. That, that's fine. Um, now, did I see today that the Czech government and uh, the energy company says um, announced um, they were looking to sign a memorandum of support for the building of a gigafactory in the Czech Republic? Yes, Ches, which is the national utility yes. company, which is 70% owned, and the Ministry of Industry and Trade signed an MOU where essentially they're making available together um, renewable energy and cash to attract, to incentivize a large gigafactory, uh, you know, being built uh, in the Czech Republic. There's been all kinds of speculation as to whether it's going to be won by an automotive company or a large battery company, uh, but it's all encouraging. And it's, it, it all plays into that um, local battery um, supply chain uh, narrative that is, it's happening all over Europe. It's happening in France and Germany and Finland and Sweden, uh, Poland, Hungary, it's all around us. And uh, now, now for those who don't know, Czech Czechoslovakia is a major auto manufacturer in Europe, it was about 120,000 people. They manufacture the Skoda, which is a subsidiary of VW. Now VW obviously want to be the dominant power in Europe in regards to EV market share. They're going to use a manganese rich uh, battery cell. Is that right? Does that play into um, your own manganese hands? Look, um, there's been statements, there's been uh, announcements made by virtually every major auto player in Europe. Volkswagen's was in March when they announced that their mass market vehicles would have a manganese rich battery. Uh, more recently, Stellantis, which is Fiat. Uh, Peugeot, Renault, and all the American brands, Chrysler, Jeep, and many others, um, uh, also made a similar announcement that all their battery chemistries will have manganese in them. Um, uh, so yes, we see the overall demand uh, for these products growing very, very rapidly in Europe and beyond. And we, even though we, we've got a shot at becoming one of the largest producers of these products in the world, we will still not be able to satisfy European demand or even come close to it. 